I mean, you've you've highlighted which I, which I think is fantastic with those videos. You highlighted the problem to both a technical audience but also non technical audience. But then we get to the big question, and this is where I really want to you know push you for you know how do we what's the solution? What is what what's the recommendations? And I saw you did a video with YubiKey, and just for everyone who's watching, YubiKeys are fantastic. I have I use them. This is not a sponsored video, so uh, I'm not getting sponsored. Rachel's not getting sponsored to say this, but you did do a sponsored piece with them, right? Explaining, you know, a bit about why YubiKeys are perhaps a solution. I and I'm preempting this too much, perhaps, Rachel. Take us down the path. What was that piece about? And, you know, what's the recommendation with these things? Yeah. So, first and foremost, Yubico and YubiKeys are fantastic. Um, those FIDO solutions make it really hard for me to get into accounts. But I want to talk a little bit about threat models first, because this is different yeah. for everybody. So your threat model is basically the likelihood that you are to receive a certain type of attack. If your threat model is super high, you're probably an activist or a politician, somebody famous. Maybe you're a big Twitch streamer or have an Instagram for your dog with 100,000 followers, right? Um, <laughs> you have stuff that basically other people want, like your money, your your access or your data or whatever. And people with elevated threat models, they have to be extra secure, extra careful because they're really likely to get attacked more frequently. And people with lower threat models, maybe you don't have admin access at work, uh, maybe you're not really in the public eye and you don't use social media too frequently and you kind of like to keep to yourself. I would say your threat model is lower. And if you have an elevated threat model, you have admin access, you're a politician, et cetera, you're gonna want to move towards a multi-factor authentication method that's super secure, like a FIDO security key. And if you don't have that elevated threat model, just turning on MFA at all is gonna stop 70% of the attacks that are just bots out on the internet trying to credential stuff. So we know that from Google's 2019 research that basically, you can stop a large percentage of the attacks just by turning on any MFA, including SMS, which gets demonized by the InfoSec population quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I recommend for most people's threat models that you just use an app-based MFA tool. And a lot of them are free. You can just get them online like Duo or Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator. Uh, and those are really useful. But getting back to Dhoni, I would say, what do we do about Dhoni getting hacked with all of those passwords? Yeah. I think he just needs to use a long, random and unique password stored in a password manager. That's a really important part so that he doesn't have to try and remember them. Turn on MFA and make sure he understands his threat model. You know, he is in the public eye. He's one of the most public facing people at yeah. CNN. Um, and so he has to be extra, extra careful. I think I've heard you say this and um, I, I'm really glad that you're highlighting that it depends on the threats, the threat model that you're dealing with. I think you've said if you are perhaps just a, like a normal person for lack of a better word, right. you could just write your passwords down and lock it in a, a safe at home or something. Is that right? Right. Yeah. And, and this is something that I think a lot of people don't understand. So let's say your brother is like a, a nomad and he <laughs> lives in a van somewhere traveling yeah. around New Zealand. Sure. I think for that individual, doesn't spend a lot of time online, usually is hiking, uh, his money's stored under the mattress, right? Uh, I really <laughs> don't think that individual needs to have a YubiKey and needs to have even a digital password manager. If that person barely uses the internet, maybe once a week logs into an email account, making sure that they have long, random, and unique passwords that are stored in whatever method works best for them to avoid reusing their password. So if your brother Gregory who does this is very resistant to using a password manager because they don't even carry a smartphone, then you're probably just gonna want to have them write it down in a notebook and maybe store it in a lockbox somewhere. That probably makes the most amount of sense for Gregory. That makes no sense for me. Uh, it probably doesn't make sense for you. And many of the people who watch this, probably it doesn't make sense for them either. But for some people, they, they either think, well, I'm never going to use a password manager because I'm not comfortable with that digital type of product. And I'm much more comfortable reusing my passwords. So I'm going to reuse my passwords. And that's that's the dangerous thing where we don't give people an out, an option that works for them. Rachel, in the YubiKey demo that you did, why were you not able to get access to the account? Like why, why is a YubiKey stopping you as a social engineer actually getting access? So the YubiKey I'm not able to hack that person unless I am physically at their machine with them with the YubiKey. I'd have to be like standing behind them, forcing them to do it. And in most cases when I'm hacking, I'm never in person. I'm over the phone, I'm over email, text message. Most people are not bold enough to 
barge into somebody's office or home and get them to plug something in and, you know, force them to hand something over. And it's tied to their machine. And so I'm not able to gain access to their, their account. I don't have access to their machine, unless of course I am using malware to gain access to their machine, but we're not talking about that right now. And so I can't steal the multi-factor authentication token from them. It's not possible for me to steal in a traditional sense. I can't convince you. I can't solicit it out of you over the phone. I can't get you to copy and paste it to me over text. And so it's really, really hard to hack you when you use a hardware security key. Yeah, because so, I mean, in the, in the demo that you did, which I thought was fantastic, the person that you were calling read their, well, firstly, you got them to go to a fake website. They put their password in, so you got their password. And then you asked them to give you the code. And, um, and that's a problem with Google Authenticator or SMS or all these, you know, 2FA methods, because that person can literally read you the code, whereas with the YubiKey, they couldn't do that, right? Exactly. There's nothing to read. There's nothing that can be solicited. It's either I'm hacking you in person and stealing everything that I need from you and I have your computer right in front of me or I don't. And that's not how most hacks go down. So for the more than slightly paranoid of us, we should be getting YubiKeys. And I, I, you, we use YubiKey as an example, but I mean, there are others. But I mean, that's like a strong recommendation, right? If you have an elevated threat model, you wanna make sure that you match your multi-factor authentication to your threat model. So if you have admin access at work, if you're in the public eye, you're gonna to wanna to use something on the end of hardware-based MFA. App-based is okay, but it can be solicited out of you. So I do recommend something like a YubiKey or Google Titan key. So I think most of the audience are gonna be more like the technical side and more worried about security. Right. And I think it's, I'm glad you're highlighting this though, because we can always say, you know, you must do this, which is like, you must use fingerprints, you must use all kinds of biometric stuff, but that's only for certain individuals, isn't it? I mean, the threat model for other people isn't that high. Right, and so you really have to make the decision that's based on your threat model that makes sense for your harm reduction. Not everybody's going to do the same stuff. Not everybody's comfortable with the same level of technology um, or has the same digital literacy. So if you have somebody in your family or a friend who's really resistant to using like MFA or um, a password manager, you can get them set up with the very easiest MFA, SMS two-factor, if that's a match for their threat model, and maybe a password notebook stored in a lockbox in their house. And that's way, way safer than everything they were doing previously. Yeah, because I mean, the problem is everyone's reusing their passwords, right? Yeah, that's why it was so easy for me to hack Donny because that password, one of the many passwords that we found for him, he was reusing across multiple sites. So I could stuff it into all of those sites and log in as him, yeah. especially if they didn't have MFA on. I was just in instantly. 